Hey, how you doing? George here. And what I'd like to do today is show you how to set up a PB980 ventilator to use on a patient. So one of the nice things about the PB980 is when you set it up, you can see and make all your choices on the, the main screen. So let's go to the ventilator. Let's fire it up and let's see how we do with setting it up. So there's the PB980 right over there. Let's zoom in. Let's zoom in like so. It's already plugged in. It's already had a pre-use check done on it. So let's simply just turn it on and get her going. So there we go. It's going to go through its startup sequence. We also happen to have the circuit that is on this device uncapped, right? Because you don't want to think it's got a patient attached. And let's see what we can do. Zoom out a bit. You can see the lights come on when they come on. Should be any minute now. Oh, we got the green light. We got our status screen down here. It's initializing. Like I said, we did the pre-use check previously, so now all we have to do is go into our new patient and choose what we want to set. So I'm not sure if you can see the tabs right over here. Let's zoom in so you can see them better. New patient. Same patient, SST. So we're going to go into new patient. Now, as soon as it comes up, you can either choose from the gender of your patient or you can simply hit their ideal body weight and program that in. So if we had a patient that was 70 kilos, for example, ideal body weight, and you can get that usually from the chart. Activate that, and now you can just change your value with the knob down here. Just zoom out a bit so you can see me change the value. Come on. So you can use your knob down here and just adjust the value to what you want. So we'll see 70 kilos, except that value right over here. Now, if you look at the top right hand corner of your screen on the ventilator, what you'll see is that it asks you or it gives you the information for choosing ventilation type, mode, type of breath you want the patient to get. If you chose a mode that allowed for spontaneous type breaths, you'd have a choice of spontaneous breaths right over there where you, there's nothing activated. The type of trigger that you want, and then all the settings that are applicable for the mode that you're in. Now, before you program your ventilator on your patient or using it at the patient bedside, always make sure you adhere to the safety practices and protocols of your hospital. Okay, so for that, I'm gonna be wearing gloves while I'm programming the ventilator. Should have gloves on when I turn it on. But I didn't, because we're not in a patient environment. But again, make sure you adhere to patient safety. So if we look at the top, now when it comes to the ventilation type, it allows us to choose from invasive, which is a, the default, to non-invasive. So to choose non-invasive, non if you're going to do non-invasive ventilation, simply toggle. And when you go to non-invasive, it brings up the, the values that are, are uh, set, that you can set for that particular type of ventilation. So we'll go back to invasive. Now when we're in invasive right over here, some of the things that allows us to choose for next is the mode. Now the mode selections we have on the 980 are assist control, SIMV, which is synchronous intermittent mandatory ventilation, spontaneous mode, and bi-level. So we're going to choose assist control, basic mode to start with, and then the next selection we have is mandatory type. So how do you want to ventilate the patient? Now the choices are PC, BC, and VC plus. PC means pressure control, so we can pressure ventilate the patients. VC means volume control, we can volume ventilate the patients. And VC plus simply means we can volume ventilate the patient controlling the pressure. In other words, we can do a PRVG style mode, pressure regulated volume guarantee, where you set the total volume that you want your patient to get and what the ventilator is going to do is choose the pressure that allows that type of tidal volume to be delivered to your patient. Next thing, it has the spontaneous type. Now, we're not in a mode that allow us to spontaneously or provide spontaneous breaths to the patient, so nothing here lights up. The next selection down here is the trigger type. So you can choose between flow triggering, which is the default, or pressure triggering. Okay? So we'll leave it on flow triggering. Now, because we chose invasive assist control, a volume style breath with flow triggering, these are the settings that come up. 
So the settings that allows us to choose from our respiratory rate, tidal volume, since we're volume ventilating, flow rate that you would set, and in setting the, the tidal volume and the flow rate, you would get a TI time, allows you to choose the sensitivity that you want your patient to receive, the FiO2 delivery you want them to get, allows you to set also your high pressure alarm as well as your PEEP valve. Uh, sorry, not your PEEP valve, your PEEP setting. Now on the bottom here, we've got also, if you want to incorporate an inspiratory hold or a plateau, you can choose to do that as well. Plus, it allows you to choose the type of waveform you want. There is no ramp or rise time on this ventilator when you choose invasive assist control volume ventilation, but it allows you to change the style of your flow waveform. So we've got a decelerating flow pattern, or you can choose a square rectangular flow pattern. And the last thing that it's got at the bottom right over here is simply a little total cycle time bar. It'll tell you how long total cycle time is. It'll show you the time devoted to inspiration, the time devoted to expiration, and it'll also give you your IE ratio when you start adjusting these values appropriately. So if you're volume ventilating, you'd have to look at your patient's uh, chart. You'd have to get information on your patient, their well-being, do an assessment on your patient to decide where you want to have all these settings set to before you initiate ventilation. Regardless, make sure you've got your high pressure alarm set appropriately for the protocols that you have in your, your area. But once you've got this all programmed and set up, all you'd simply have to do is hit start, make sure your patient's attached to the ventilator at that, that time. So in essence, that's how you'd kind of set everything up uh, on a PB980 ventilator. Okay. So we'll zoom out. What we'll be doing in some later videos is I'll be going through how to quantify whether to volume ventilate or pressure ventilate your patients, as well as how to initiate mechanical ventilation once you've programmed the ventilator appropriately. Okay, so I hope you liked this video. If you liked it, give me a big old like. If you didn't like it, thumbs down. But again, give me some suggestions how I can make these videos better for you. So until next time, have yourself a great day. Take care. And this is me in 3D. Anyways, have a great day. Take care. Talk to you later.